Thank you, Birgit. And Birgit stepped in at quite short notice, and uh, she read Psalm 23 most beautifully. I'm going to be reading Psalm 23 in a minute. I'm, I'm splitting my reflection into two bits. Um, Birgit looked at what I was doing, and she, she looked with some horror and said, I hope you don't want me to read the Doric version. I said, no. But the trouble with Psalm 23 is its very familiarity. Sung or coupled with crimen, it's sung at so many funerals, or certainly was in the past to people of an older generation. It's so familiar that perhaps we don't really pay attention to the words. They wash over us. How to remedy this? I have a New Testament in Scots. I have a New Testament in Doric. But of course, this is Psalm 23. It's in the Old Testament, straight on to the internet. There it was, five seconds later, Psalm 23 in Doric. I skimmed down and read to the bottom, and it said, translated from Hebrew to Doric and versified by Bruce Gardner. I suddenly thought, I know Bruce Gardner. We were appointed in this, on the same day pretty well exactly 40 years ago. Me, principal teacher of art at Aberdeen's newest school, Old Macker Academy, he is a new principal teacher of English. Well, Bruce stayed in teaching for a while, and then he left for the ministry. He trained, he went to Peru, he's led a very checkered life. He then taught himself Hebrew, he taught himself Gaelic, and for a number of years, he was a minister in Lewis. We actually went and visited him there and had a lovely family meal together. He became, in the fullness of time, the Reverend Dr. Bruce Gardner. And he's also, just a little aside, he is one of Margaret Sweeting's cousins. I think that's right. She gives me a nod. Yes, I've got it right. So, let's hear now, not the English version, but Psalm 23 in Doric. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll nae went for nothing. He curries me doon in the green gers o' haem like sparkling waters. He casts me to quietness. He boses my soul back to life just the same. For his name's sake, he leads me through stracht and richt pathways. Though I gang by the glen, a death shadow forby, I'll fear me nae evil. Your crummock will curb me, but your crook will gie comfort, for your walking nigh. My table you've set out to four ah, my foes. Lord, we isle o anointing, you've blessed my croon, my quakes running o'er. And greed and love chase me, ah, my days, till your hoose far, for I, I'll lay down. And now we're going to sing Nut, Nut, Crimin, which I've always found a, a rather turgid tune. We're using another tune to sing, guess what? <laughs>
It seems that a certain type of lectionary reading is following me around with my latest reflections. When I was with you in March, the reading dealt with Jesus' love for Jerusalem. He wanted to wrap his arms around like a mother hen sheltering her chicks under her wings. Images of birds we explored then. This time, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, a shepherd and sheep. And in John 10, the sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So this week, it's sheep and a shepherd. What is it about the idea, the image of a shepherd and sheep that still resonates powerfully in the 21st century. Why does a psalm from so long ago, written for a very different agriculturally based society, still touch us so deeply? We don't have day-to-day -day dealings with sheep. They don't roam around battlefield. We may not ever have met a shepherd, yet we readily identify with the sentiments of the psalm. It might seem odd to regard the Lord as a shepherd, given the fact that shepherding was a lowly occupation, involving long hours, modest pay, and hard and dangerous work. The rod, the crummock in the Doric version, was a two-foot-long oak club with a round, knotted head, dangerous and lowly. However, people respected the attentiveness shown by good shepherds towards the sheep. Sheep were not very smart and without good leadership were inclined to wander away on their own. They were defenceless against predators. They needed a shepherd to lead them to water and pasture and guard them against a host of dangers. In Psalm 23, the writer is very clear. It's my shepherd. That personalizes God's role as shepherd, bringing it down to the level of the individual person. I'll not want. It's only logical that the one whose shepherd is the Lord should lack nothing. For a sheep, everything depends on the shepherd. If the shepherd is capable and committed to the welfare of the sheep, the sheep can, by and large, expect a good life. We read from John 10 today, verses 22 to 30. Earlier in that chapter, in a thinly veiled criticism of the religious leaders of his day, Jesus contrasts the good shepherd 
who would lay down his life for the sheep, with the hireling who would flee in face of danger. I began to think at this point about good and bad shepherds. Is there a modern analogy that we could usefully employ? Political leaders, don't make me laugh. I don't think that quite fills the bill. I thought for a long, long time. Eventually, all I can offer you is this, RNLI lifeboat coxswain. The image of refugees being rescued by lifeboats in the English Channel did it for me. And the RNLI has received much criticism for their actions in some quarters. A good shepherd, though, cares for all his sheep. The psalm deals with all needs, sustenance, green grass, water, care, a gardening through all of life's stages, a spread table, blessing, and a final secure dwelling forevermore. You'll know from past reflections that as a visual artist, I like to involve artworks within my reflections to illustrate or cement home a point. And today is no exception. There we are. I remember that the great 20th century sculptor, Henry Moore, devoted whole sketchbooks to studies of sheep in the fields around his house. Here is one, a study of a ewe and a suckling lamb masterful drawing and a tender scene created. Apart from his sketchbooks, Moore produced large sculptures designed to sit in the landscape. And here is one, sheep piece, a massive sculpture. The sheep seem happy to shelter under its protective bulk. I'm reminded of the soprano aria, Sheep May Safely Graze, by Johann Sebastian Bach, setting words by Solomon Frank. Here, the sheep do seem to graze safely and contentedly. But I hear you ask at this point, what right has David Chin to speak about sheep this morning? He was an art teacher, for goodness sake. He's probably never done anything with sheep. He doesn't have the knowledge of the writer of Psalm 23. If it is a Psalm of David, King David was a shepherd as a youth. The knowledge of a shepherd's life shines through the words. Well, I may not have the skills or experience of a shepherd, but I do have some experience of working with sheep. And it came about like this. At art school in the early 70s, I had a friend, Kit. A year below me, I was doing ceramics. I was doing sculpture and ceramics and she was studying ceramics alone. She came from Shetland, where her parents, John and Helen Williamson, had a croft in Oliberry. Because her then boyfriend, now her husband, was a fisherman and always at sea, Kit used to invite fellow students up to her parents' croft, the lubber, to help her while away the summer and to help out on the croft. One morning, John, her father, came to me I've got a sheep with a very bad leg, David. I'll have to take it to the vet in Hillsborough. Would you come with me and help? Well, I'd read a bit in preparation about Shetland sheep. Calm and charming in disposition, docile and intelligent. What could possibly go wrong? Well, what went wrong 
was this. In common with many Shetland crofters, John Williamson only had a motorbike license. <laughs> so he drove a reliant three-wheeler van on that license. My job, it transpired, was to hold the injured sheep steady in the back of the three-wheeler for 30 miles. Oh, the sheep was intelligent, all right, but calm, charming, and docile it was not. It took one look at me, decided that I was no shepherd, and was as awkward as possible for the entire journey. Two falls and a submission later, <laughs> the submission on my part, of course, we reached the vet. The return journey was marginally less traumatic. So that's something about sheep. What about a good shepherd? Back to the internet. All I could find there were Jesus images showing a white Caucasian with a spotless robe, flaxen hair, center parted, flowing down to his shoulders and a very neatly trimmed beard. His sheep, unlike mine, looked soft, cuddly and adoring. Well, that won't do at all. Would you like to see a real shepherd? Of course you would. I can do better than that. I can show you a whole boatload of shepherds. There is John Williamson in the white berry in the left. And there is me. It's a rather poor slide because the, the boat we were in was rocking somewhat. It's me with much hair. I was 23 and a red beard at that time. I'm to the right of the man holding a can of McEwan's. Uh, other beer brands are available, or, or, or so I'm told. Well, it's a thirsty job being a shepherd. We were off to a part of Shetland's coastline best reached by salmon cobble, men and dogs. An annual trip to shear, dip, and mark the sheep. Good shepherds don't abandon their flocks, no matter how remote, intelligent, and hardy they are. I was still looking, though, for a definitive art image to share with you today. And then I found it. Picasso's Man with a Lamb. Picasso did this work during the last years of World War II, and his preparatory drawings are described by the artist and critic Roland Penrose thus. March the 30th, 1943, the shepherd is a loving father who clasps a confident lamb to his bosom. The final bronze is a bit different though. The lamb, gripped on one side, cradled on the other, emerges from the center of the man, the shepherd. The animal is simultaneously held close and lifted in the air. Stability and lightness. This version is in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Another version is in the Picasso Museum in Paris. Picasso also gifted this third version to the town of Valéry in southern France, where it starts, it stands in the village square. It was the first public sculpture of Picasso's to be exhibited outdoors. A gift from Picasso for the warm welcome he had received in Valéry. Picasso claimed he intended no symbolism or message. It is, he said, a man with a lamb. I'm not so sure. Designed as it was initially 
in Nazi-occupied Paris, it has become a somber memorial to wartime sacrifice in the fight against fascism. One final image of the sculpture, the strength, the planted solidity of the man. The sculpture is almost seven feet tall. This is a man, a shepherd, who will not fail his sheep. Roughly modelled, he rises with a permanence from the earth. The lamb with its thin, yearning neck explores the world, safe in the knowledge that come what may, it is held secure. The Lord is my shepherd, he curries me doon, he boses my soul back to life. My quakes running o'er, and greed and love chase me a' my days, till your hoose far, for I, I'll lay doon. Amen. <laughs>